Russian troops resumed offensive operations in the area of Pogrebki, Darino, Zeleny Shlyak, and Sudza in the Kursk region. Analysts from deep state of Ukraine claim that Ukrainian forces are repelling the enemy's counter-offensive in all directions of the Kursk region. The enemy's tactics are standard. The BMP transports infantry to the battlefield, parachutes in and enters the battle. The situation in Kursk region was commented on by the Ukrainian Armed Forces officer Alex on his social network page. According to him, the enemy is currently focusing on the Pogrebki area. However, the day before, Putin's army was missing 10 units of military equipment on this section of the front alone. The public, Bitly, also shared its opinion regarding the new offensive of the Russian armed forces in Kursk region. It refers to the OSINT investigator Kriegsforscher. Allegedly, Putin gave a new order to liberate Kursk region in two to three months, not days. The Ukrainian armed forces were already prepared for a new counter-offensive by the Russian Federation on November the 7th, which is what actually happened. As it turned out, Putin's army recently carried out a rotation in the Lyubimovka area. At the same time, units from the 810th Marine Brigade received 40 new BTR 8-2A, and the enemy's left flank was reinforced with another 5,500 Russian servicemen. In the Pogrebki area, the Ukrainian armed forces' positions were attacked by the 83rd Airborne Brigade and the 51st Airborne Regiment. Despite the bad weather, they launched a mechanized attack. The 51st Regiment used five units of military equipment and seven buggies for the attack. As a result, all seven buggies, two BMD-2 and five BMP-3 units, remained on the battlefield. The 83rd Brigade left a T-80 tank and one BMP-3 on the battlefield. The 810th Brigade used 14 BTR 82A vehicles in the attack, 10 of which were destroyed by Ukrainian forces. Alex writes that North Korean soldiers are not yet visible, although they should be somewhere nearby. Let us recall that Ukrainian forces are actively using an old, proven method of fighting against enemy artillery. The Ukrainian military was amazed by everything behind enemy lines. In particular, they were surprised by how quickly the invaders could dig in, bring up their reserves, and also by the fact that they had different types of troops. This was stated by the deputy commander of the 97th Battalion of the 60th Separate Mechanized Brigade, Ivan Medvedyuk, in an interview with Ukrinform. Everything was striking. That is, they entered brazenly, like, Look, you should already be greeting us. We are already here. Yes, they dug in very quickly, immediately pulled up their reserves, ammunition, food. They had all of that. There were different types of troops. In the Kharkov direction, there were Buryats and private companies such as Rusishi GUR men. Their special forces were very noticeable there. Then when we ran into them, we heard someone talking and we decided to go and have a look because they were standing on our road where we were walking. When we approached there, it was very interestingly done. There were burrows dug, dugouts made for two to three people. They were filled with logs. There was a layer laid between the logs and the ground and then paved with straw and hay, the soldier noted. According to Medvedyuk, all this indicated that the Russian occupiers were prepared and knew what they were doing. He added that the special forces did everything thoughtfully and camouflaged themselves, while the LNR and the DNR could steal everything they saw from the locals. We did not find any garbage, cigarettes or cigarette butts around those dugouts. They had dug up the area. They collected the garbage and immediately buried everything, camouflaged it. That is, it was the special forces that were sitting there. And where the LPR and DPR were already stationed, there were also those, a gypsy camp. They stole everything, dragged it off. The locals said they took everything, pots, bathhouses. And when the Russian guard came out, when the bridges were blown up, they left the LPR and DPR. They did not consider them their own. Those were separate. That is, they got there through fields, forests, ran away. Oh, help me. That's what the kind of coordination they had. That is, each unit for itself. Yes, they had some kind of interaction. But when they were hit on the back of the head, each one got out on his own, added the deputy battalion commander of the 60th OMBR.
In an interview with Kremlin propagandist Solovyov, the commander of Akhmat, Apti Alodinov, emphasized that his unit refuses to have any contact with the soldiers from the DPRK. The main and only reason is that they are all atheists, godless, reports the channel. According to Apti Alodinov, it is wrong when the country is defended by atheists. At the same time, he is not against other religions that Putin's soldiers profess, Judaism, Christianity and Islam. But he is categorically against the North Koreans because they have no god. Moreover, the commander of the Kadyrovites threatened Kim's soldiers with reprisals if they say a crooked word about the prophet of any religion. Earlier, Apti Alodinov refused to exchange Chechen prisoners of war in Ukrainian captivity, advising them to wash off their shame with blood and be slaughtered instead. Alodinov was responding to an appeal from his brother Kadyrovites who were pleading to be released from captivity. He delivered a lengthy tirade about the disgrace of surrendering to Chechens, finishing up by advising them to take a pen or a nail, pounce on someone, and do all they could to die fighting and end their lives, like men. Meanwhile, footage from Kursk region is already being actively published on the internet in which you can see soldiers from the DPRK. Moreover, some of them are not only on the front lines, but also in hospitals and clinics. South Korean intelligence recently reported that the Russian Defense Ministry has transferred 10,000 of Kim's soldiers to Kursk region. Some of them are in the frontline zone. Overall, the Russians plan to deploy five DPRK units, each with 3,000 troops, along a front line stretching about 1,500 kilometers. They will be stationed in the northeast, east, and southeast of Ukraine. We estimate there are at least 10,000 North Korean troops in the Kursk region, and that number could increase slightly as we continue to monitor their presence. Pentagon spokesman Pat Ryder said, using the acronym for DPRK, the official name of North Korea. Last week, South Korea's defense ministry said about 10,000 North Korean soldiers had been deployed to Russia. A spokesman for the ministry Chung Ha Kyo said many of those troops were deployed to forward positions but did not elaborate. The Chinese authorities are concerned about the dispatch of North Korean troops to Russia but are trying to hide it. One of the main problems for Beijing is the possibility of restoring the Cold War triangles, writes The Guardian. On Friday, a Chinese foreign ministry spokesman said sending North Korean troops to Russia was their personal business, the newspaper recalled. Meanwhile, state media have remained silent on the issue. The publication noted that analysts noticed the concerns of the head of the People's Republic of China, Xi Jinping, after the dispatch of North Korean troops to the Russian Federation. This is connected with the ideology of China, within the framework of which Beijing works on a common destiny together with other countries. I'm not sure the Chinese government really believes what it says. Shen Dingli, a senior international relations scholar in Shanghai, China has repeatedly accused the United States of pursuing a new Cold War mentality toward its country, the publication emphasized. However, military cooperation between Russia and North Korea could lead to a new Cold War, in which China would also have to participate. This would make it more difficult for Beijing to balance between its strategic allies and its economic dependence on the United States and Europe. The problem is that this Cold War mentality is completely at odds with China's national interests. Today, China is not the China of the 1950s. For now, I think Beijing can continue to watch. We should be very careful, said Zhu Feng, Dean of the Institute of International Studies at Nanjing University. Tong Zhao, a senior fellow at the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, told reporters that Russia could try to challenge China for influence over North Korea, especially if Moscow helps Pyongyang with nuclear targets and long-range ballistic missiles. He stressed that China would not like that. If Moscow goes so far as to help Pyongyang's nuclear program, it would be a serious challenge to the international non-proliferation regime in which China has a significant stake. China now envisions a strategic coalition with Russia and North Korea, but with itself as the driver, fearing that either partner will take radical initiatives beyond its control. Earlier, former advisor to the US, Secretary of State Matthew Breiser, 
said that China feels strong discontent with the DPRK's deployment of troops to Russia. According to him, this could prompt the US and its partners to act more decisively. In addition, the Chinese foreign ministry said that it knew nothing about the transfer of North Korean troops to Russian territory. Beijing assured that it was in favor of de-escalating the war in Ukraine.